A league that was supposed to be dominated by a couple has seen three different champions the last three years, none of which Miami. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Norris alongside CSTV's Trev Alberts with you here to quickly break down the ACC. Wake Forest last year's champ after finishing its best season in 105 years of college football. We'll see if they can repeat, but Trev, as a whole, what has been the success for teams in this conference? I think it comes down, this conference, a lot like other conferences, Jason, it comes down to quarterback play. In the college football, it's so important. You know, the ACC has not been dominated by the traditional powers. A lot of us thought Miami, Virginia Tech, and of course Florida State would continue to dominate this conference. But if you look at those top schools, look at the Miami Hurricanes, look at Florida State, of course Virginia Tech, they just haven't gotten that consistent quarterback play. And that's why when you look at some teams like Boston College with Matt Ryan and some others, Riley Skinner, Wake Forest got terrific quarterback play from a redshirt freshman last year. So this conference, I think, has taken a step back because we haven't seen that dominant quarterback play that we've seen in the past from those big three or four teams. And Skinner was ACC Rookie of the Year. You mentioned Florida State. They've fallen on hard times. 11 yeah. losses the last two seasons. That's the same they had from 91 through 99. So a lot of problems on offense. They went out, got new coaches, five new coaches, four of them on offense, including Jimbo Fisher from LSU to become the offensive coordinator. Uh, so a lot of new faces to help the offense. Where does that leave uh, the two quarterbacks battling it out, Drew Weatherford and Xavier Lee? Well, I think they're going to have some direction. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I hesitate to say this, but the reality is if, if you watch Florida State the last couple of years, and Jeff Bowden's a nice enough guy, he's a good football coach, but there's a difference between being a good football coach and being a good offensive coordinator. There were times when it appeared to me as if, as you look at this offense and what they did under Jeff Bowden as the offensive coordinator, 45th in scoring, 103rd in rushing. That's just not Florida State style offense. It's a high octane offense. And it seemed to me that there were times in the last couple years where when it was third down, you literally look at the piece of paper and, okay, this is a third down play. Let's pick that one. <laughs> there was no rhyme or reason to what they did offensively. I promise you there is still talent at Florida State. I think that Jimbo Fisher is a great addition. And I think it's because he expects a lot. I've been reading down in Tallahassee some of the articles, and the players are like, this guy doesn't mess around. I mean, this guy demands perfection. There is talent. They need some discipline. They need an offensive coordinator who understands what, he what, what he's doing. And I think that Jimbo Fisher is that guy. Drew Weatherford will be a different player at quarterback. They still have two good wide receivers. They have a good enough running back in Antoine Smith. So I think they get it done a lot better. Maybe not great yet. They're still learning the system. But Florida State is not going to be the Florida State that finished 7-6 and six last year. A lot of talk about the uh, discipline the first day of practice with Jimbo Fisher on the offense uh, helping uh, Bobby Biden. All right. Miami, another team that's been struggling, yeah. especially offensively. New coach, Randy Shannon, the old defensive coordinator, but it's the offense that struggled last year. Where do you see Miami this year? Well, same sort of thing. I mean, this was an offense that was 87th in the nation in total offense, still very good on defense. Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator, comes over as a head coach. I think it's the same sort of thing. It's a disciplined sort of deal. But remember, when Miami was really good, Miami would line up behind offensive linemen, and they would tank the football at you. They had this reputation of this team that wanted to throw the ball all over the field and everything. Sure, they did that, but they first established the run. You can go back through the history of their running backs and realize they always had good offensive lines, bruising running backs, and then quarterbacks who could play action and take a chance deep. And so I think that Kyle Wright in this offense, if Kyle Wright is indeed the starting quarterback, needs to establish the running game. Javaris James, whoever it is at running back, establish that run and then take some chances down the field. This will be a better team. They're still not there offensively. I think defensively, they're still going to be very good, but I think there's enough holes offensively that they'll show improvement, but they're still not going to be a great team offensively. You know Miami's going to be just as fast as anybody else oh, yeah. on the field, if not, if not fast. Alright, let's get into Virginia Tech, and obviously with the Hokies, you can't uh, start the season except with the tragedy that happened on the mm. campus in Blattsburg, and uh, so much been made about how Virginia Tech will handle that and how they'll be playing for everybody else, but to, on the football field, one of the best defensive teams in the nation. Last year was the best defensive team in the nation. First in total defense, first in scoring defense. But again, inconsistent quarter play. How does that work here with Sean Glennon? Well, I think that's the whole story. You would hate to put so much pressure on a young man. Sean Glennon is a terrific kid. I think he's going to get better. But you see it right there. It's 11 interceptions. I mean, Frank Beamer and the way he does his offense is, the, is, is like he does every year. He plays great defense. You mentioned number one in the country, Bud Foster, a terrific defensive coordinator. If they can get any, I mean even marginal offensive output, this is a team that can compete and win the ACC. I mean it. They're that good on defense. I think it really comes down to Sean Glennon and not turning the ball over. He had too many turnovers last year. 99th in the country in total offense. 
Brendan Orr is still a very good running back. He has two very good wide receiver. Eddie Royal is outstanding on the outside. So I think it does come down to quarterback plays. We mentioned from the top, this conference right now is about who can establish the quarterback play. On defense, they have eight returning starters from that defense. Let's quickly go through these last couple of things here. Your surprise team. Well, I think the surprise team is Georgia Tech. Not a lot of people talking about Georgia Tech. Remember, Calvin Johnson left. Everybody thinks that suddenly they're not going to have a very good offense. But remember this name, Taylor Bennett, came into the bowl game. No more Reggie ball, no more turning over the ball. Over 300 yards passing in the Gator Bowl and a nice win for Georgia Tech. They still have Tashard Choice, a terrific running back, 132 yards average the last seven games, and you still have a terrific quarter, uh, defensive coordinator in John Tenuta. So I think Georgia Tech is that surprise team. All right, real quickly, a couple of quick hits here. Start with Boston College. What does Jeff Jagodzinski do for the team? I think that he spreads the field a little bit. I think Matt Ryan has even more weapons, and they use all of their weapons. They're still going to have a very good defense. I think they'll surprise as well. All right, Tom O'Brien left Boston College, now at NC State. What's in store for him? What's in store for him is a team that needs some rebuilding, needs some more athletes, but they will not beat themselves. They will not turn the ball over, and they'll be more disciplined. Butch Davis, the coach at North Carolina, first time back in college since 2000 when he was at Miami. Has 10 seniors. What is he doing this season? Well, I think, you know, you just continue to build. You teach the young man how it is to win. So many times becoming a head coach, you have to teach him how to win and continue to recruit. John Blake, one of the best recruiters is on that staff. Marvin Austin's there. A lot of freshmen. Get them playing time and continue to recruit. I should say only has 10 seniors. Not that, that's, a, that's a small number for a football team. All right, folks, the ACC, it kicks off September 1st, and that'll do it for the ACC. But for more on each team, be sure to read Dennis Dodd exclusively here on CBS Sportsline. You can watch Trev all throughout the season on Crystal Ball on CSTV. So for Trev Alberts, I'm Jason Horwitz. Take care.